Okay, so we left off with the theme pretty close. We've got these hover effects going on now. We've added a group hover utility uh, extension to the Tailwind setup. So you had to go into the config and actually add that as an option. This does generate more classes, so be sparing with what you do declare here. But in this case, we kind of needed it just to do that effect without really reaching for crazy JavaScript or something. So apart from that, we have more to do. And what we'll start with is the next bit, which is gonna end up being another container block that has just some basic content. So this stuff in particular, we're gonna bring into the mix. So we'll start there on the index page, get rid of this. Just at the very end after that div, should be ready to just roll with a new div. And this is gonna be a full width div as opposed to the container class we've been doing. But we do wanna do, um, or actually, this part won't, the next div will. So let's do MX Auto again and PY8. We want its definitely top and bottom space. Let's do the font alt class for this entire block. Be text white, text center, and MDPX0, and then PX4. And then Within that will be a text gray base div. We'll do 600 and we'll do margin bottom four. And on medium screens, text large, otherwise text base on mobile. And within this is just gonna be a text span. So we'll say films. And I'm gonna kind of use some decorative classes here to space it out. So we'll say span. And within that will be bracket thing. I, for, I swear I know the name of it, but I do not. Uh, but I just want some offset between those. So we'll kind of just repeat that in a second. I'm going to just copy it for now. Films and TV shows. And then creative development. Awesome. So that's that primary div we'll see right here. So let's refresh. We'll see that below now. It's a little different in color and size, but I think it's fine. Um, below that will be an H2, that main heading we saw. So it'll be pretty big. So text 5XL I went with, and then text 2XL on mobile. Font sans, font bold, and MB4. And it's just about GSL Productions. And we'll look at that. And below that is one more Ipsum. And that class name will be Opacity 75, Max Width Medium, and MX Auto. It kind of centers it, but also sets a width so we can kind of make it a paragraph looking thing. And then below that will be a link to more info, I think. Yeah, so href, we won't go anywhere because this is just static. So class, be text brand, um, up and down margin just a little bit, and then we'll just say inline block. And I'll just say more info with the plus sign. And that should be it. So that little block's already complete. And that looks pretty similar, if you ask me. Maybe the weight of this is different and the color of this is a little different, but I think it's fine. Yeah. In fact, we can probably set that to text alt or font alt to kind of get it a little closer. Yeah. Cool. And then below that will be this new div that we're gonna look for that is this big giant, um, I guess, background image slash video. So let's add that next. This is gonna be a full width thing, so we won't need a container class per se. So we're gonna start with the relative block because within it, we're gonna have an absolute block, kind of like we do with the video up at the top. So we'll say flex, flex wrap, item center, and this is where I define that video CTA class because we needed that definitive height. 
So we set that as 582 here. That's what I measured when I viewed source on the original template. So that'll make the space quite a bit taller. So that's already set up, uh, but we don't have any content yet. So we'll have to continue on here. So video CTA, and then I did a little uh, padding of nothing on medium, but then on mobile we'll set quite a bit and then PX4 all around. Okay, so within the next div will be actually that image that we'll pull in for the background image. Now you could do this in CSS and say background image equals URL something, but I find this should just be just as well uh, and actually a little bit easier to control in terms of responsive design. So I guess to each his own there. So we'll say width full, height full. Uh, we're gonna use that Z negative property again we defined and then opacity 75. And within that we'll have the image source of the images and video background image. I had already have that in that directory. If you don't have that, you can go grab it from the source code. Uh, the key here is to make it responsive, you use object cover and we'll set up define width and max width full so it stretches. And then height full. So that should already fill up that gap, which is good. But now I need content overlaying it. So then the nice thing is it should just work in this case. So below that will be quite a big div uh, containing all this stuff. So container MX auto again. And we'll say text center for everything because it will be. And then text white for everything with full. And we do need some flex properties. So flex and flex wrap. So it degrades nicely on mobile. And within that, we'll have an H3 class. This will have quite a few classes. So we're going to make it pretty big on medium screens and text 3XL on mobile. Font sans, font bold, text, or we're going to do tracking wide. Kind of space the letters out. MB4 for some offset on the bottom with full and letting tight to kind of just make the line height a little less. So we'll say releases coming soon. I'll just capitalize those. Great. And then we're going to have a button below that block. So we've got it centered. Uh, that's kind of why we did the flex thing. If you notice the uh, flex item center just goes ahead and justifies the content center relative to the, the children inside this div. It's kind of a nice, uh, I guess, accident. I don't know. It's not really an accident. It's kind of what I wanted, but it's one that you could run into as an accident. So the main link is going to be, I'll show you, a video plus link. So it's a video icon plus a link with the under, underline itself, which makes it a little harder, but possible. So our class itself will be an inline flex property. And I do that just so it doesn't span full width. Uh, I don't want it to since it's a link. And justify center it kind of makes the thing centered inside the scope of the link. And then hover opacity will be 75. Within this will be that play button. Uh, I'm going to steal this from my current old project simply because I, I customized this. This isn't straight from the source. Uh, let me find it, this bit here. I pulled this from an open source icon collection as opposed to dealing with, I think they, they had just a basic image and it wasn't, I didn't want to deal with the image. SVGs are sharper. Okay, so below the SVG, we do have a span and it's going to end up being that play video text. So margin left will be two, padding bottom one, border bottom, and then border white. And we'll say play video. Okay, so that's that. Let's see if it's centered, looking good. That's the template. This is not quite center. So I think we still need to adjust that to be 
Yeah, I believe I forgot a div up here. So we need to wrap this with a with full class around the a tag. We'll indent that. And on medium screens, we'll set quite a bit of margin bottom and then margin bottom six. Otherwise, so that kind of puts things in the middle there as a result of that width. And then below that, we'll have just a, another width full div just to wrap the other stuff, which will be the anchor tag. It's going to say all videos. This is going to have quite a few classes. Now we could set up some custom components, but you know, these, all these buttons are different. So whoever designed this wasn't really thinking at scale, which is kind of a sad thing, but it's part of the problem with some websites. So justify center, text white, border, BG transparent, and PX8 for the button, and then PY3, we're gonna set a hover to BG white. Yeah, hover attribute to text black. So when we hover, there is a fill, but the text turns black. And then medium, we'll say margin top zero and margin top four, and just say all videos, and then a plus sign and that should kind of center it and give us the button with that fill as we hover. So pretty cool. If you want to make it rounded, you could too. Maybe I will rounded. Yeah, slightly rounded now. Awesome. And that's pretty close. Uh, this needs to be a different font, I noticed. So let me update that to font, not fans, sans. There we go. And then finally, we have our footer section. So this is nothing but just a kind of a sign up form for a newsletter with a terrible hover state. <laughs> uh, so let's go ahead and add that as a footer element. And we'll have as you probably guessed, the container, MX Auto, it's kind of a default, and text white, PY6, margin on, or not margin, padding on mobile, or on desktop screens, and PX4 on mobile. And within that, we'll have a div. This will kind of be offset a bit, so padding left three on medium screens and it will have a border left on medium screens border right border white excuse me and margin bottom six so within that will be the newsletter title so we'll say capacity 75 we'll say gcl newsletter and then the main heading, which is pretty big. So we'll say MD will be text XL six XL and on mobile, we'll bring it down to three font sans font bold margin bottom four. And this will be see it first. So check that out. That's the template and here's ours. There we go. So it's pretty close. Not an exact design by any means, but it's definitely more scalable. As you can see, I had to add very little CSS and I can only imagine how much has been added for this. That's just custom per section. So I try to think about that when I'm using Tailwind. It's kind of a nice feature of Tailwind in terms of adapting to pretty much any design uh, with a few um, exceptions here and there. So since there's a form element, we're going to have a form element and we're going to say our flex item center, justify start and flex wrap. Within that will be an input of email type and then we'll have some classes for it. It's kind of got quite a few uh, so text white border BG transparent py3 letting tight px4 medium will be on medium screens it will set the width to a defined width so on a third and then on mobile we'll just go full screen margin right will be four and we could set a placeholder value as they have it 
which is enter your email here. I don't know why they put an asterisk, but it's there. So I'll just do so. And below that will be the submit button. So you could do the same input type of submit and then class B button primary again. And we could extend it just to be a little bigger. Value will be subscribe. So that means that little extension means that this is um, the same height as the input, which is kind of by design. So if we start typing, we have white text. Pretty cool. On the actual design, there's like a weird hover state on this thing. I don't want that. That's stupid to me. So I'm not going to put it there. And below that, we'll have our copyright information. Um, on this one, I kind of just made a funny uh, knockoff of that. So we'll actually add a whole new div for this part. And it's going to have some social icons, which I'm going to just steal from the other project because it's just a lot of SVG code. So we'll say flex item center, justify start, and flex wrap. And this will contain everything. So first we want the main copyright code, be class opacity 75. I'm using opacity as opposed to like text gray because it just makes a difference with the black background. You can go either direction, but the text gray in Tailwind's kind of got a blue hint to it and I don't really want that. Blue tint, I should say. So we did and copy sign. So 2023 by GSL Productions, proudly, this is my edition, proudly copied from Wix.com. Okay, so we'll leave that there and then we'll be good to go. After this will be some social stuff. So I'm just gonna have a div that's gonna be MDML4, flex item center, Justify start. And within that, we'll have a link in MX2 for each social icon. It's going to be just a, a list of social icons in MX2. And then if, then each, we'll just have some SVGs. I'm going to steal this stuff from the other project. I don't think it's that hard to understand. So I'm going to grab all these links, paste them in here. And the big, the main gist of it is the SVGs have a fill current text white class opacity is 50 by default, but then when you hover, it becomes 75. So they're never fully opaque, but they are close on hover. And then we set up define width and height. So that should mean we've got our final piece. They're not displaying the way we want though. So the vertical right now, so let's fix that. This would be why typo. Current text hover opacity. Okay, so we don't have that as a configuration option either. So we need to go to opacity and add um, hover on the config. So if you save that down, this should work now. Cool. Again, that generates more classes, so be sparing with that. But in this case, I'm just showing by example, so I think we're good to go. So that about does it guys. We did a full landing page. Now the example of course has interior pages. I'll leave that up to you to do. And we left out some of the uh, extra stuff. Like actually, why don't I do that real quick? I forgot the actual arrow of the slider part. So we can actually add that in um, as well. So why don't I do that? It's gonna be at the very beginning and it's gonna be like a button. So let's go scroll up to those bits here. So there's going to be right after that last a tag, we'll have a button class. And I'm going to say button class absolute. Now this parent div that it's in is relative. If you remember, if you go way up here. It's got relative at the very end. So that's important. We need that for this to work right. So if that's absolute, then we could say pretty high Z index, give it some padding. We'll say rounded full like a hover effect and then block right will be zero. We're going to fix it right within this container and inset Y will keep it on the, in the middle ground up and down 
if we say inset y0 and then margin i don't think i need a margin but let's do a little bit i want to steal this icon as well just uh like an arrow icon this one right here and we'll paste that in it's just got the fill current text white we set the width and height to six and it's got a hover of the orange color of our brand color so let's see what that looks like and you see this arrow right here now we get that by default doesn't do anything but if you were to integrate this it's ready to roll so it's fully responsive and we added very little css to get this done uh, we did include all the assets of course from the main template but it's not a like a deal breaker to me that um, we needed to use some of these and not others uh, besides that i think we're pretty much set though so hopefully you found this useful um, I'll probably do more of these in the future. They're, they're pretty fun to do. Um, I don't know that I'll do complete sites, but just like pages that I find intriguing or interesting in terms of using Tailwind that you wouldn't, wouldn't otherwise think Tailwind would work great for. But um, yeah, if you like this and or uh, have other suggestions for pages to build, please let me know. Feel free to link them in the comments or on the blog somewhere. Aside from that, I will see you in the very next one. All right, peace. Hello Rails is my new course on Ruby on Rails. I'll teach you Ruby on Rails from the ground up. Visit hellorails.io for more information.